Hej. It's great to see you again here at Go to Aarhus 2024. I've been seeing you at these conferences for two decades. Now. I know. I love this place, and it used to be called Yahoo Conference. It used to and be you know, cool. I was here the day after 9/11. Yes. I was in Copenhagen oh. the day it hit, and I was flying here, and yeah. they decided to have the conference here. Mm -hmm. So I have memories, and we did a we did a, a run. Yeah. We did a little running race. Yes. Good memories. I like the Aarhus. The Danish smile. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's great to have you back. Thank you. You always have something interesting and sometimes a bit provoking to say. Right? Oh, mm -hmm. So this, this time, I was expecting, mm -hmm. since this is an Agile conference, that you'd be talking about what's going on in the Agile world right now, yep. because you're one of the, pardon my French, oldies, but goodies, yep. right? Yep. You've been there since the start. Yep. And then you start talking about AI. Why? Well, because AI is, is affecting every part of everybody's life, mm -hmm. uh, and it affects the agile world as much as anything else. It, it affects the programmers, it affects the scrum masters, it affects the managers, it affects the product owners. So, so AI, if I roll back maybe a year or something, I said crypto is basically a scam, it's going to go away, but AI is literally going to change the world. I feel like it's the beginning of the internet mm -hmm. with AI. Yeah. That, that, yeah, I have the same feeling. I yeah. remember that not quite the beginning of the internet, but also when Google came, yeah. that was also life changing in many ways, right? Yeah. And this is the same just on steroids. Yeah. And what I'm wondering is, because you, you came up with some really good use cases yeah. of AI and some experiences, what are you worried about? Because you don't seem very worried. Oh, I'm terrified. <laughs> <laughs> I just, hi, I'm terrified. <laughs> <laughs> what are you terrified about? Nah, it's. Uh, uh, I'll tell you what I'm terrified of, and, and it's a report of a radiologist, and it's a, a woman from India who got a very demanding degree in examining uh, x-rays and doing radiology uh, stuff, and she managed to get out of India, she sends money back to her country, and they found that the AI could do most of her job, so she could get, you know, lose her job or go back to India. Mm -hmm. There's a whole set of professions that's... So in my talk, I talked about it's a power tool for the people who know what they're doing. Yeah. So the people who are good yeah. programmers... Mm. Who can evaluate the answers that they're, they're good. They're doubled productivity. Yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. times productivity. So they now can outproduce their junior colleagues by enormous margins. So if we take that to certain fields, uh, there's certain categories of people who are just going to be redundant. And, and the, the thing is, as many people have commented, we have always wished for robots who would wash our dishes and, and vacuum the carpet and instead, so that we could focus on painting and poetry and now the robots are doing the painting and poetry and we're stuck washing the dishes and vacuuming <laughs> the carpet. So for me that is terrifying. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a fact and, and um, the other thing I wanted to say is I follow Grady Booch, yeah. smart guy, IBM fellow working in the AI field. And he keeps saying it's not the magic you know, thing that you're looking for. It's not auto, um, uh, uh, automated general intelligence. It's only doing copy-paste. Uh, but that copy-paste is doing a lot of people a lot of good. So it's, uh, I think it'll be like Excel, right? I need yeah. to, and I know people who use it. They just go to ChatGPT and they do things like we do in Excel yeah. or with, with, with a Google search. Mm -hmm. um, and it's speeding them up a lot. It so, really so it, it's it's the the scary part for me is that is that we wanted someone to clean a house so we could do the painting, mm -hmm. but it's doing the painting and we're cleaning the house. Uh, that's part of the part that scares me. Yeah, yeah. So, what is it that you hope will happen? What is your I don't predict scenario? the future. You know, I'm no. I'm on record. Um, my investment uh, record financially is terrible. <laughs> I thought it was a bad idea to write a, the Agile Manifesto. So I just don't go into the future. You don't go into no, books. what I do is I go around the world and I find out what people are doing, and then mm -hmm. I tell other people what people are doing. So someone wrote that they were a presentologist, not a futurologist. Yeah. So I'm more a presentologist. I tell people what's happening now. Like a cross-pollinator? Cross-pollinator. Actually, if I could, um, I'm a bard. And I say bard for those who know, in the olden days, they like were talking you know, sort mm. of medieval times or Greek times. What did the bards do in the olden days? Well, they'd go from town to town, and they would tell the stories of the olden times, the gods and the heroes. Yeah. 
And they would tell people what was happening in other villages, what the fashions were. That's exactly what I do. I tell people in the 90s, before Agile, we built Agile because we were looking at this, and da 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 da, and so what these people were doing in the olden days, and I tell people what the heroes were doing, da 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 da. So I do that, and then I say, and I just saw in Australia this, and I just saw in Vienna yeah. this. So yeah. I cross pollinate. Yes. So truly, in that sense, I'm a bard, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to predict the future. That's sad. I, I know. Would. I know. Not I. <laughs> I. I know my limits. I just. Do you have uh, any questions for me? No. Well, you're in Denmark, and I don't. Uh, uh, house. The economy is down right now everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Agile is down. Employment. So I think we've got a, a, a recession. We've got. We've got the the post COVID still hasn't come up. Uh, remotes done a bunch of of, of damage. We've got, of course, the, the, the war in Ukraine that's mm. sucking up all the supply yes. chains and all the supplies. So we really have a global recession. And so I would just ask you, because I don't know, in Denmark, is there, are there pockets of strength or is it seeing something up or is, is it just the same as the rest of the world? Well, that's actually a very good question because I have been talking to a lot of my friends around the world and they all say that's a recession, we're getting, people are getting laid off. Mm. And I don't see it as much in Denmark. Mm. And, mm. and I think that a company like Novo Nordisk is actually mm. keeping Denmark up financially at the moment. Um. Um, so I think that's part of it. So yep. there are sort of pockets of things that we can still use in Denmark. We're not, we're not drying out as quickly right now, but I think it's thanks to some of those big companies. Like so I have a thing I want to say. Is this going to be mostly a Danish audience? Yes. Good. So there's something I'd like to tell you that I saw on TV, and I'm going to, because I'm speaking to my Danish friends. I love Denmark. I love Scandinavia. Uh, so there was an American uh, journalist, and I don't know if they do this on purpose that they ask the stupid questions because they're stupid, or because they're humoring their mm. their constituency back home who really have no clue. So he comes to Denmark and he's interviewing people mm -hmm. in Denmark and says, "So Denmark is supposed to be like the happiest country in the world, right? Where the people are the happiest." And they say, and they say, "Why are you so happy?" And person after person, they, they say, "What?" It's quite nice here, you know, I mean, I have food and I have friends and, 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 and so on. And say, yes, but you don't have this and you don't have, you're not the most of this and the great. Said, no, that's all, that's all right. You know, it's kind of nice. You're happy because you don't have huge, great goals. Yeah, that's about, that's about right. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I like where I live and I have some friends and foods and I like my... And, and so it was fascinating to me that the reporter truthfully or because he was role playing yeah. this, this this American like we must have we more must, must be best and biggest. couldn't understand yeah. that yeah actually you know it's pretty good huh mm. wouldn't you say yeah okay I'm happy yeah done and I think that's also what I say when people ask me why are you the happiest people in the in the world and actually the Finnish people have overtaken us but let's not go there I say it's because we have very low expectations it's fine if you have low expectations you are easily Look, you made have, happy. You have friends, you have food, like it's pretty good, huh? Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, anyway, so I wanted to <laughs> shout out to, yeah. the, to the Danes <laughs> for the, uh, the lovely answer. Like, yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. It's yeah, pretty I'm happy. Good. Oh, and and okay. what is actually particularly here in Jutland, part of Denmark, yeah. we say, it could be worse. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's considered good. Yeah. So, so, and I, 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 I borrow from this because I focus for happiness on every little thing. Like I sat out in the sunlight for five minutes mm -hmm. today. That was awesome. You get a good dinner with somebody. Yeah. It is just tremendous. So all of those little good things. So uh, I'm, I'm carrying back to the, as a bard, carrying back to the, my Danish friends, uh, this piece of Denmark yeah. that comes around. And congratulations yeah. to everybody who has that view. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, no, I think that's it. Super. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you very much. Yeah.